What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build your very own aquarium. Alright guys, so all of my equipment and all of the supplies I need are set up in my kitchen right now. So we're going to go ahead out there to the table so I can show you guys what tools you're going to need. Um, that way you guys can go ahead and make your own aquarium and I'll show you the process on how to do it. It's not very difficult to do. So let's go build an aquarium. Alright guys, so essentially what you see laid out here on the table is all you need to build an aquarium. It's very, very easy to do it. Um, so I'm going to go over a little bit of what I have laid out here. Um, so first things first, this is the glass, right? So this glass I got out of an old cabinet. Um, I don't know if we can see it, but in the glass here, you'll see it in a little bit in the video, there are handles that have been ground out of the glass. So these panes of glass were sliding glass windows in a cabinet, and when the cabinet was taken apart, they broke. So you can see the broken glass here, and there's one on the other side as well. And I'm gonna repurpose this glass to an aquarium. So the first thing I did is I sat down, I measured all the glass with a tape measure, and I put together a plan of how big I wanted the aquarium to be. So this aquarium build is going to be uh, 21 by 21 inches, um, and it's only gonna be 11 inches tall, which is fairly shallow, right? So it's almost going to be like a double deep 10 gallon. So uh, essentially it's going to be a 20 gallon tank. And um, this is what we're going to do to build it. So we need a way to measure the glass. So we have our tape measure. We need a nice straight edge. So we have our level, right? It's got a nice straight edge on it. And the reason you need a straight edge like that is for cutting the glass. Now to cut the glass, you just need a glass cutter which is this little tool right here. You can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot for about four or five dollars. And uh, they have little carbide wheels, so hardened steel wheels in there. This one has six in it, so if one dulls for any reason, you can turn it and then you still have five other wheels to work on. So that's a nice little tool. Um, you're also gonna need an oil. You can either use a specific cutting oil or there's other oils you can use. Go online and look them up. Personally, I'm just gonna use WD-40. Um, because if anything was to happen to this tool, it's a cobalt tool. So I can just take it back and get another one for free. They have a lifetime warranty. So once the glass is cut, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to sand down the edges on those. Which actually, I didn't put the sandpaper in front of me. This is 60 grit sandpaper. So 60 grit is a very coarse sandpaper. You want to sand the edges down because when you break glass, I'm sure everybody knows glass is extremely sharp. So make sure you sand the edges down so that way you're not gonna cut yourself. So make sure you have some 60 grit sandpaper. Once all the edges of the glass are sanded, we can then go ahead and clean the glass up real good. And then you're gonna need a caulking gun with some GE1 silicone. And we are going to put the aquarium together. So while the silicone is curing, we're gonna hold the aquarium together with some tape um, just to make sure all of the corners are nice and straight and square, we are also going to have a triangle to line up all the corners and edges and keep our aquarium as cubical as possible to prevent stress. So essentially that's all we're going to need um, except for acetone which is used when sealing the aquarium and that's what we're going to clean the edges with. But I'm going to show you guys how to do all this throughout the entire video. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to cut the glass. All right guys, so cutting glass, it's not something that's very hard to do, but it can be very dangerous, so I do recommend wearing gloves while you're cutting glass, and especially when you're breaking the glass because the edges can be very sharp and you could cut yourself, so make sure you have a pair of safety gloves with you, um, or at least thick leather gloves, that way you're not getting cut during the breaking process or the sanding process. That being said, I don't have mine right here, so I'm going to go get them. Alright, so I got my gloves. We're going to go ahead and set those right there. Now, what you want to do is, when you're cutting glass, you want to make sure that the glass is as square as possible. 
right? So to do that, you can use a square, make sure your edge is nice and square here. And when I mean square, I'm talking at a perfect 90 degree angle. So I already know that this corner is square, I already checked it. So what we need to do from there is I'm gonna cut the base panel for the aquarium. So my base panel is gonna be 21 inches by 21 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure over 21 inches from the edge. So 21 inches from the edge for me is right here. And I'm actually going to use a piece of tape to create a nice mark right at 21 inches, like so. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the reason I'm using tape and not a marker or something is a marker pro um, provides a very wide edge. And on glass, it's kind of hard to see it. So being that it's an, a very wide edge, you're not exactly sure where in that mark 21 inches actually is. Where with the tape here, you know 21 inches is right at the edge of the tape. So you can make your cut right to there. And then you know you have a nice square piece of glass. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the other side, and then I'm gonna show you guys what to do from there. All right, so you'll notice that the panel of glass has changed from the last clip here. And I've gone ahead and I've started cutting a couple pieces of glass to familiarize myself with the process. And I'm just going to pick up where I left off from the last piece. Now, the blue pieces of tape have been placed. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to score the glass. Now, you use the glass cutter to score the glass. And I've already laid the tape at 11 inches. So I'm just going to take my straight edge, which is gonna be my level, and I'm gonna line it up a hair off of the tape that's here because the wheel on this cutter is not uh, on the side, it's in the center. So we need to offset the, the straight edge a little bit so that it cuts on the very edge of the tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. Yeah, that's good there. Okay, so the straight edge is in place. Now all you have to do is put pressure on the straight edge and run the glass cutter across the glass. You're going to hear what sounds like uh, fabric tearing, right? And that is the carbide tip scoring the glass so that we can then proceed to break it. So I'm going to show you how to score it now and then uh, I'll show you how to break the glass. So we just apply a little bit of pressure. And then we're gonna go ahead and score it. Okay. So we'll check to make sure it's scored all the way across. And it did except for the very edge up here. So it must have been riding just on the tape a little bit. Okay. So we're scored all the way across now. Now I don't know if you guys can see that, so I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see the score mark. You can see the score right here, going all the way across. Hopefully you guys were able to see that. All right, so now we're on to breaking the glass. Now, in order to get a nice clean break along this, right, this is what I do. So we'll take the glass and we'll lift it up. And I'm gonna take my straight edge and we're going to place it right on the score line. Okay. Now, my gloves are going to act as a soft surface. So we'll put one here. And we'll put one up in here. 
Now, essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to hold this pane of glass here, and I'm going to strike this pane of glass here, causing a fracture to happen right all across this uh, etched line that we put in the glass, which will cause the glass to break exactly on that point, giving us the dimension that we want in this piece of glass. And then I can take and score a line across here to the correct length that I want, and that will give us our pane of glass for the aquarium. So I'm going to go ahead and hold pressure here, and then I'm going to strike this side. And as you can see, I'm being very careful because these edges are sharp. This is our pane of glass. You can see the, the light reflecting on it there. It is 11 inches tall. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure the other direction. And I'll show you me breaking that so we can get our correct size pane of glass. And then I'll go ahead and do the rest of them. And uh, then we're on to silicone it together. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one set up, break it, and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this, but essentially what I've done is I've taken a pane of glass that I've already cut to proper size, and I've laid it on top of the new one we've just cut, right? And then I've placed the tape, so I'm using this piece of glass as a stencil. So now we can remove this piece of glass that's already cut to the proper size. We can take our straight edge. Set it to the proper distance. And then score our line. Remove our tape, check our scores. Okay, I must have ran the edge of the tape on the other one. And this side. Okay, there's that one. There's that one. All right. So just like we did before, set our line, apply pressure, and strike. There's our piece of glass there that's going to get thrown away, and here is our plate of glass that is cut to fit our aquarium. So we'll take that and we'll set that on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the rest of the panes of glass and then we'll come back in a second. Alright guys, so all the glass panels are cut. Um, so I do have one thing. This is the base of the aquarium and when I cut this back edge on the aquarium and I snapped it off um, it developed a stress fracture. Now basically what that is is a crack, right? And it developed the crack across the corner of the glass and I had to make the aquarium smaller. So as it sits right now, this uh, pane of glass is 20 inches by 19 inches. So it's a little under the size that I wanted. Um, it's going to come out to probably around 17 gallons, I believe. Um, but I'm still building an aquarium out of free glass, so I really, it doesn't bother me too much. I'll be able to find a home for this, no problem in the house. And, uh, yeah, so that's that. Just a little update. I did have to reduce the size of the, uh, the tank. Um, and in doing so, I had to cut the edges smaller. So now my edges are, uh, 19 inches and 20 inches. So I want to show you the glass here of basically what it's going to look like. So this is a 20 inch piece. This will go here. And 
this is a 19 inch piece. This will go here. Okay. So roughly that is about what it's going to look like right when it's built um, with the other two sides on there and everything. So that is that. Um, it's getting to be a little bit late here tonight, so I'm probably going to pick this video up tomorrow and we'll go ahead and we'll put everything together and silicone it. Um, but that's it, so we'll go ahead and pick it up tomorrow. Alright, so I just put it really quick. I just put it together to make sure everything fit the way it's supposed to. Whoop, taped it together. And uh, this is what the finished product of the aquarium is going to look like. It's relatively short. It's only going to have about 10 inches of water in it, um, so it's not going to need any bracing or anything. The silicone is going to be able to hold everything in place. Um, I may make a custom frame for the top and bottom just to help hold it together a little bit better, um, but that'll be after the fact. I want to get the glass all put together first, and then uh, I'll make a frame to cover the sharp edges and things like that. But this is the aquarium, guys. I'm really happy with how it's come out so far. So um, tomorrow we're going to go ahead and we're going to silicone it together and then once it cures we'll build the top and bottom frame for it out of wood I'm probably going to build it out of and uh, yeah it's going to look awesome. Alright guys so it is day two of the aquarium build. I have the aquarium broken back down from what you guys just saw and the reason for that is when you go and break glass panels to make an aquarium or for whatever reason the edges of the glass are going to be razor sharp, so you have to be extremely careful, make sure you got your gloves and stuff. Um, but what we have to do now is we now have to go through and we have to sand down all the edges. This is 60 grit sandpaper um, to make sure we take all the sharp edges off so that we're not cutting ourselves when we're trying to reassemble the aquarium. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do that now. Um, I've already pre-done all of these sheets of glass except for this one right here. So I'm just going to show you guys how to do that. You have to wear gloves when you're doing this, otherwise you will cut yourself. So you just take your pane of glass, take your sandpaper. Now with your gloves and stuff on, these are leather gloves, so I can run it lengthwise across the glass this way. Generally what you're going to want to do to knock those sharp edges off is if your pane of glass is this way, you go across the pane of glass. So knocking this edge off, um, but you can also do that running it back and forth like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sand down this pane of glass so that we can uh, begin the assembly process. Alright guys, so we got everything sanded down, all the edges are nice and clean, not sharp at all, very smooth. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to begin the surface prep part of the build. Um, so basically all we need to do is make sure all of the mating surfaces of the glass is nice and clean um, so that way you get good adhesion from your silicone. And what we need to do to do that is cotton balls, paper towel, a washcloth, something like that, some kind of something to apply acetone to. This is 100% acetone. You can get this back where uh, nail polish is in Walmart or any store like that. 100% acetone in this bottle was like 80 cents or something like that. So we'll just go ahead and we'll open this up. Pour some onto this paper towel that I have here. And you just want to wipe down the mating surfaces. If you want, you could wipe down everything, you know, which I'm probably just going to wipe down all the glass to make sure it's completely clean. So there's that pane of glass, and you can see how dirty it is, right? So I'm probably going to do the acetone cleaning process a couple times just to make sure everything is super clean. And then you just wait for the acetone to dry. And then we can go through and tape out all of our surfaces. And I'll explain to you guys why we're going to be taping out the surfaces in a second. Um, it has to do with the application of the silicone. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe all this down. Now while you're wiping these things down, one of the things that you want to make sure of 
is that you do not forget to not only wipe down the entire surfaces of the glass on the mating surfaces, but also the edges of the glass. Because this is where your silicone is going to be actually holding your tank together. So these edges, you want to try and make them as clean as possible so that you get good adhesion from the silicone. Alright guys, so all of my surfaces are clean. Um, if you see this brown here, that's on the bottom side of this pane of glass. So after everything's put together, I will clean that. Um, but I'm not super worried about it. But everything's clean, everything is dry thanks to the acetone. So now what we're going to do is we're going to begin prep work for our silicone. I am using GE1 silicone. You can get this at any hardware store or uh, Walmart. It's like 4 to $5 for a tube of this, and it works very well on small aquariums. I've used it in resealing aquariums up to 75 gallons with no problem. Um, I did have an issue with my 150 gallon, but I don't believe it was the silicone's fault with that because the glass had actually bowed because of the style of the aquarium and it failed. But I, again, I don't believe it was the silicone's fault. Um, it's just the, the nature of that aquarium. So how we want to do this is the first two panes of glass are going to be the hardest ones because we're going to have to get them both set in place um, and then attach them together to be able to move forward to the other panes of glass. So how we're going to do it is we're going to start by laying a bead of silicone halfway around the bottom. And the reason for that is so we can mount the inner pane of glass here, right? And then we can mount an outer pane of glass here. Now when I'm talking inner and outer, when you look at an aquarium, there are panes of glass that mesh up on the inside and the outside of each other, right? So we're gonna be doing the inner pane first, attaching the outer pane by putting a bead of silicone up this side, mounting this plate in place, picking this plate up, and mounting them together. Um, and then once they're together, I have these pieces of tape laid out. You wrap a piece of tape around the sides, and then the silicone itself will hold everything together. Um, and then you can work around to your other panes of glass, assemble the aquarium. Um, and one thing that I want to do before I do all of that is I want to take masking tape and tape out the edges on the inside of this aquarium because when you put everything together, once all the panes are set, you can then take your finger and run it around all the corners and actually make your uh, seals at the same exact time. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tape out all of the, the edges on the plate of glass, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna begin the building process and silicone this entire thing together. All right guys, so all the edges are taped out on all the glass right now. If you want to learn how to do that, make sure you check out my How to Reseal an Aquarium video. I'll post the link for that down in the description. Very, very easy to do. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our silicone and we're going to start making an aquarium. So uh, let's take the silicone, pierce the safety seal that's inside there. Okay, so like I said, we're going to run a bead halfway around, and then I'm going to set this one in place, and I'm going to run a bead up this edge, and then I'm going to attach this piece onto there, and then we're just going to work our way around. Um, and yeah, that'll be pretty much it. So I'll probably start this off in real time, and then we're going to speed it up, because this is probably going to take a little bit. So here we go.
this together, I'm going to go ahead and go around now and remove all of the tape from the silicone. And then I'll go up the outside with a paper towel on it to clean up the silicone on the outsides of it. Um, but for right now, I think everything looks pretty good. Um, I double checked all the seams and everything. And everything looks like it's pretty well mounted. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start pulling this tape off. Let me just pull some paper towels out here so I have something to put the tape on. So here we go. Alright guys, so I've gone ahead and I went around and removed all the tape from this. That way the tape doesn't cure into the silicone. And any of the excess on the outside I'm going to trim up with a razor blade later. So pretty much as it sits right now is how the aquarium is going to look for the most part. Um, I'm not going to add any cross bracing or anything like that because with the thickness of the glass, which is quarter inch, and the overall volume of water and the height that the water is going to be. Um, I'm not going to have to add any cross bracing. The silicone is going to be more than strong enough to be able to support the entire weight of the aquarium uh, with all the outward pressure. And if you're curious about building your own aquarium and you're wondering what glass sizes versus height and length and stuff like that you're going to need, um, you can look at this picture right here. Um, I'm going to put a link down in the description also for this picture so you guys can download it and have it as a reference on your own. Um, but that's what I use. So. That's pretty much it for this build. Um, once the silicone cures up, there is a little bit more work that I'm going to have to do to it, but that's going to be for another video. Uh, essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys how to build frames uh, for an aquarium. That way if you guys have one break, you can actually make one out of wood if you really, really want to use that tank still. Um, and it's not very hard to do, it's relatively easy. Um, I did one for my 75 gallon long, if you guys have seen my other videos, the top frame for that aquarium. Um, those tanks are very rare, so trying to get a frame for that is impossible. So I had to make one. So you guys can see that in my other videos. Uh, it didn't take very long to make, it only cost me about 30 bucks to do the whole thing. Um, but essentially that's what I'm going to do for this. I'm going to build a little frame for the top, just decorative, and then I'm going to build a base for this that is actually going to house the um, the foam pad that this is going to have to sit on. So it's going to be plywood, foam pad with a decorative trim around it. And um, it's going to end up coming out looking really nice. So, But that's for a future video. I'll show you guys how to make that stuff in the future. Um, but for right now, that's it for this video. Uh, the tank is built. I'm happy with the way it came out. 
So once this silicone cures 100%, I'll be back with that next video. So it's probably going to be a couple days yet, but uh, yeah, like I said, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching Trafish Aquatics, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.